Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today I want to talk about something a lot of sisters go through. And I'm going to talk about it very concisely right now, but I do want to talk about it in a lot of detail at other times. I think it's important for every sister to actually know this stuff. But a lot of women, sisters, mothers, divorcees, they feel like, you know, why do I feel like nothing without a man in my life? Um, teenage girls feel this. People that have been divorced feel this. So why is it that a lot of women feel like that they're nothing without a man in their life? And so I'm going to talk about this and then I'm going to talk about how that actually affects when you are in that state where you feel like your value comes from something external. When you feel like something, your value comes from something external, how that actually affects your relationship. I'm going to talk a little bit about that too. So, um, so you know, uh, especially in this culture and uh, in the Western culture where you read about you know, Cinderella, and you read about the Sleeping Beauty. Uh, a lot of these stories uh, that are not part of the Islamic culture, when you read these stories to little kids, kids from a very young age start developing these fantasies, you know, it becomes like a fantasy of Prince Charming in my life. And it gives them, even, even within a relationship, it gives them this concept of a relationship, something that relationships are not. Uh, you know, happily ever after, he'll do everything for me and make me all happy and so on and so forth. And then, of course, the Bollywood uh, syndrome uh, is a big part of that. Uh, so you have, you know, especially for a Desi girl uh, who has been part of, who's grew, grown up reading Cinderella and Snow White and the others, and uh, then also uh, watches Bollywood movies, you can expect that this affects them even more, uh, those uh, sisters and those women even more. So what happens actually? Because your value is on something external, this is what happens. So uh, let me just uh, draw, just draw a diagram that you kind of understand. Uh, when you have put value on something external, so the first thing you try to do is okay, you you, you feel like you're somebody. So you're like in twelfth grade or ninth grade, and you're asking yourself. Why, and this is not just for Muslim girls, it's for, for everybody. You start asking yourself, why doesn't that guy like me? Why doesn't he ask me out for a date? Because your, your value is based upon how much attention the opposite gender is giving to you. And so you're, you're, you know, you're in ninth grade or sixth grade or seventh grade, oh, why hasn't he asked me out? Why has he asked her out? And you're valuing yourself based upon these you know, little kids asking each other out or not asking each other out. And what happens is, that in order to get connected, because you know that's what human beings want. They all want, all human beings want a connection. Okay, so you all, we all want connection. And what happens is, in order to get con connection with a man, or in this case, it may be a boy. Okay, if it's in high school or middle school, you're trying to get connection with a boy. What happens? Your value of yourself is based upon how much. They, uh, they are how much you, how much input there is, and how much output there is for this connection. Okay, and uh, so, so you could say input, how much time you're putting into connecting with them, and how much they are uh, putting back to you. Now, this, especially at this stage, if you really believe, like subconsciously deep within you, you start believing that I have to find the prince charming. And you know, if I don't find my Prince Charming, you know, everything is destroyed for me. What you will try to do is you will try to control the relationship. Because your whole value comes from having that relationship. So, you know, you'll really try to be in touch. Like for example, you want to be on the call all the time with the person, you know. You see this a lot of times in high school where they can't even just stop talking to each other because why? Because they don't want to lose control of that relationship. And this is true for guys and as well as girls. But here's what the tricky part is. That if you don't value yourself, then what does this relation turn into once you have the guy? So oh, in the beginning, it's trying to control everything about him so that you can get him. And then once you have him, once you have him, then it goes in one of the two directions. Okay? Either you will be 
so much, again, trying to control everything in the relationship because you don't want to lose the relationship and the fear of abandonment, the fear of rejection, the fear of these things will force you, because your value comes from having the guy, these things, the, your sense of control will be so much on him that he's going to be suffering. The other is the opposite of that, that he will see that how much you need that attachment and you are the one that's going to suffer beyond normal, normal levels of suffering and he will, uh, he will make you suffer to be in that relationship. So it doesn't stay in the middle is the point. Either you will be controlling him because you don't want to lose the relationship or you will be suffering more than the average person should. You know, suffer at all costs, suffer for love, whatever he does. And, you know, there's, there's so much on this. Uh, how, what, how, what people will do for love. And this is true, again, even when people are divorced, they feel like, uh, you know, I have no value unless I have a guy in my life. And then they'll find the first guy that they can because that's what gives them value rather than waiting for the right guy. And then they try to control the relationship because they've already had uh, lost one relationship. They don't want to lose this relationship, so they even try harder and harder and harder. Or they <coughs> suffer more and more and more because they're making all the wrong decisions. Now, what happens when, either if you're on this side or if you're on this side, what happens to the relationship in terms of, okay, everything's falling apart, you're trying to control him, or you're suffering and suffering and suffering, nothing's in the middle, in the balance, uh, then people will do other things to make themselves happy, like overeat, like take drugs, do alcohol, anything to keep the pain away of the fact that the main thing that gives you your self-esteem, which is this guy that you thought you had but don't have or still don't have, whatever the reason, then you will overeat, do drugs, alcohol, drug, all sorts of things to keep that pain away because your value comes from having that guy. I am nothing without a guy. You know, it's called being addicted to love. It's like you have to have somebody love you or feel like somebody's loving you and that gives you your value. So what is the... The Islamic uh, narrative is quite different. You see, Islam sees that your value does not come from external sources, but rather from your internal, uh, your, in, your, your internal self. How humble you are, how much you don't show off, how much you don't lie. But that aside, that's a spiritual aspect of this. But what I'm trying to say only right now is, is that you have to examine why do you feel that this external reality, this guy, gives you your value. You know, why does he give you your value? Is it because you read Cinderella stories? Is it because you watched Bollywood movies? What? And then you need to trace back and ask yourself, is this, is this how you should be thinking? You know, we talk about, we live in a free society, but really, uh, it's amazing how many uh, emotional traps we have created for ourselves in this very free society. Uh, it, it is emotionally very trapping, this whole situation, that sets up women to be... Uh, feel like losers. It, it sets up women to feel like losers because their value comes from having this external guy. And as you know, especially in the Muslim world, uh, more and more time is being spent outside marriage than inside marriage. And then you have low self-esteem. And when you have low self-esteem, that's another thing. When you have low self-esteem, then you're doing good deeds, not because of compassion or empathy, but you're doing good deeds because you want to, you know, you have the pleasing syndrome. You want to please someone you want to make somebody happy, you're doing good deeds because you don't want to feel guilty, you're doing good deeds because you have the fear of losing someone, and so your whole life becomes a mess like this. You've got to re-examine why you feel like you're nothing, and you've got to understand the Quranic view of how men and women both are not seen in, as in the context of marriage in Islam, they're seen as context of their individual selves. And so uh, that's a topic for another time, but I just wanted to start this topic off by talking about what happens and why so many women feel like they're nothing without men. Thank you.